<clears throat> Hello and welcome to Hukalo TV. Today, James Charles with us, who will be channeling. And uh, in the uh, chat, we have Amanda, Christine, Don, Eva, Jim, Marlene, Mimi Clara, 75, Paula, Salish, Salem, Sheer, Stephanie, Steve, and myself, Mark. Uh, Jim, can you introduce those in the room? Yes, well, Raymond's outside, but we have Angela, uh, Barbara, and Alan here for, for today, and myself. Okay, let's see. And for announcements this week, uh, we have the uh, Dansville Workshop coming up August 16th. Details at hukalo.org. And Jim, I believe you had a few more announcements. Yes, well, the workshop is $400 for that six days. So it's it's really a good deal because you'll have a good time. You'll uh, meet a lot of people. And and those of you have that have been to workshop before, have all had a wonderful time at least so far that's all i've heard so hopefully it will be once again a good time also we have uh, a possible galactic reiki class coming up if there's enough interest please let me know i know of about three or four but if we can get probably 10 or 11 people in the class that would be great it's a hundred dollars for two days two three hour sessions and we'll set that up as soon as I know that there's uh, enough interest for it. Also, um, the book is doing very well, actually. We have sold about 50 copies, which is really quite good. And um, it's mostly to our family here, but uh, we've done very well with that. We, that's uh, a very nice thing. So thank you very much. Um, <laughs> And I believe that's about all the things that I have to say, except for, I have to go back to the workshop for one say, a second. Uh, at the workshop, we will be doing the first Reiki healing teachers course, which means it shows you the in, how to teach the class and how to give attunements. So that will, I believe that's what's going to happen at the this um, workshop that will be very much different than some of the others is that we will have a Reiki healing teaching class. Also white magic and some of the other things that are important to people right now. So that's, it'll be, it should be really good. If there's any questions or anything, please let me know. So very good. Thank you, Jim. Uh, I guess now we'll do requests and then blessings. Uh, in yeah. the chat, um, uh, Christine has asked for whoever can give us information on the next big event and how to help it to a positive flow. Uh, Eva's asking for Grindel. Uh, Sheer is asking for Odin and the Galactic Council. Um, I'd like to hear from Takur if she has anything to, and Marlene as well has asked for Takur. Uh, if she can say anything ab about the agenda for the, or, 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 or uh, if the government meeting started, how it's pr proceeding. It has started, yes. And anybody in the room have requests? Any requests here? No. no. All right, no requests in the room. All right, then that brings us to blessings. Who would like to do a blessing today? Anybody here? I'll do one. Barbara will do one. Thank you, Barbara. Okay. Anybody else out there? Okay. All right, go ahead. Okay. Nakoshuatia, Nakashiwata, what not? Yata, Kiato, Kuata, Hiawa, Yatna, Watia, Kuatio, Kuat, Nyana, Yata, Kusuti, Atatu, Kushu, Watatia, to Kushua, Yatnia, Huati, Kushu, Yatia, Shiki, Atatu, Tua. Thank you for allowing us to be in your presence and to hold the beautiful power of God 
stable for you so that you may have a good time together with community, one with another, to show each other the love and kindness that God has for each and every one and to inform you of what is to happen and how to be a greater person in this realm. Well, that was nice. Anyone else? Anyone online care to give a blessing? If not, we'll just move forward. Okay. Mine is simple. Blessed be. Blessed be. Wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> it says so much just with those two words. So... Excellent, thank you. All right, let's see who is going to come in today. We have a lot of different requests. Not as many as usual, but still they're, they're important people. Grindel, Terkur, Odin, the Galactic Council. I forget some of the other ones, but of course they know who they are. So uh, they will come as they are called or if they feel called to. So, um, I'm going to do a little bit of um, a meditation and I will be back later. Have a good session and um, enjoy what they have to say. <clears throat> Greetings, I am Elijah. I have just come at first to speak to you for just a few minutes. First of all, I want to say thank you for all of you who have missions. Now, the, talking about missions, there are those of you that are seeking your mission. Some of you may say, I know I have a mission, but I don't know what it is. But this is a time for action. How, am, how are you going to find your mission? You must seek it out. Sometimes God's will is for you to search, take action, not just sit there and wonder what your mission is going to be, but to actually research what it is that you feel is your greatest um, asset to the world, for the world, and then move forward and find information about it. I know those of you who have, who have already started your missions have done research about it or have come to a place where you know how to proceed. And until you come to that place, you need to take actions to find your mission. Now, many have been sitting at home going, I know I have a mission and I don't know what it is. And that is what I'm speaking of. Uh, or they'll say, I don't think I have any talent. God has given everyone a talent. God has given everyone a mission. Whether it be tiny or grand, he has given everyone something to do. It is not that he created you to do nothing for him. For if you choose... He will give you responsibilities to help him with all the things that he needs to get done in this realm. Now, you do not have to help. That is up to you. It is free will whether you help God or not. Free will whether you help God or not. But many of you really want to help. And many of you see the state of the world today and say the world needs help. Why shouldn't you want to help that in some small way? Even with your um, presence, with your identity to the world, that can make a difference. 
it can make a difference how you appear to the world. So keep yourself positive. Keep yourself in a way where people will know that you are a good uh, presence for God. That can be your mission. Some of you that feel that you have no talent whatsoever, which I don't believe that, you, but you can be a good example to the world. At least that can be a start. But those of you who are already on your missions, those of you that are already starting and doing and acting with your missions, remember to keep on track with prayer and uh, supplication every day. Because if you get out of balance with God, then your mission will be out of balance. What do I mean by out of balance? If your prayer life takes on too much me, then you're out of balance. If your prayer life takes on too much of everything but you, then it's out of balance. Keep everything in balance. Remember the Lord's Prayer. He gave thanks for everything around, the food, keeping people out of temptation, keeping yourself free of sin and all these things. And now, remember, remember that that was given quite a long time ago. And he was showing the people an example of how to pray. But you have your own prayers from your heart. You do not have to say the Lord's Prayer to be praying. You can pray from your heart, but you can use that as an example of what things to include into your prayers and so much more. Right now, the world needs a great deal of your prayer. The world is in a very big turmoil at this time, greater than I've ever seen. Because, of course, back in the days of Christ, the world was in turmoil, but it was not that big of a population. Now you have billions and billions of people that are needing your help, that are needing your prayers, your love, your understanding, your compassion, your healing. Yes, if you feel that you are a healer and you're, there's nobody around to heal, you should be sending your healing out to the world. That is an action. You should be sending love out, sending healing out. You understand that you must find an action for whatever it is that is your gifts from God. If you're just sitting there thinking about them, they're not really doing much good. But if you're <coughs> acting, no matter what it is, some people say, well, I live in a remote area and there's nobody here to heal and I can't really find any uh, place to go that I can be with other people to heal. And it is true. There are some areas of the world that are remote and that people do not have places to go, but you can still send out your healing. Every human has healing in their hands. So send it out to the world. Pray for the world. Do you know how much power is in prayer? There's been studies done that it shows that the people that were in, uh, that were being prayed for got well faster than those that were not being prayed for. And some of them didn't even know that they were being prayed for, but they still got better faster. Why? Because there's energy and power in prayer. There's energy and power in healing, energy, and power in prayer. Keep that in mind. If you say that you can't make any action, that's not true. A prayer, healing, just thinking about how to change the world, a, a simple research online about the things that interest you about God or about the things around you. Remember this, there are many religions in the world, many, actually more than a hundred. Why are there so many? Because mankind sees God in so many different ways. 
mankind has a perspective of God that can be very multifaceted because God is very multifaceted. Remember that. You will never, as a species, understand God, but you will understand part of him. His love, his understanding, his grace, his kindness, his healing, his mercy. Perhaps some of these things you can understand. Can you understand his power? No. Can you understand what he knows? No. But you can get a glimpse of who he is or a perspective of him. And that's what all these religions do. They have a perspective of God. And why does he allow that? Is be is because a perspective of God from even um, a small perspective is better than no perspective at all. Remember that. You may say, well, that religion is very, they don't really have much spirit. But yet, if there are people there that are finding God, if there are people there that are seeing God from that perspective, then God is trying to get through. Oh, sure, there are things that are blocking their perspective in that particular religion, perhaps. But God is trying to get through in some way. And as he gets through, he is blessing those people in one way or another. So keep that in mind. So if you may think that, yes, this religion or that religion is not living up to a, a full standard of who God is, none of them do. None of them do. Because why? God is so vast, how can any religion live up to what God really is? Mankind puts his own perspective on how they see him. And so you go to that place that has your perspective that you resonate with, that you can find God the best through. And that is why I am here. I am trying to let you know that God wants you to have a new perspective of him, that he is not out of reach, that he is here for you, that he is open to you, that he wants you to be with him, and that you don't need the confines of a shallow vision, but you can have a greater vision of God if that's what you choose. It's up to you. Your choices are important to him because it is how you see him. And it's how he is looking at you as well. He loves you so much. He wants you to know him so badly. But he is, knows, he all, already knows that you cannot understand who he is in his fullness, but you can get perspectives of him. And the perspectives that he would rather you see are his love, his kindness, compassion, mercy. So find God in the positive aspects that you know of him. He will be with you. He answers prayer and he does healing. Remember, he is a powerful, all-powerful leader. I know there may be questions out there today, but this is not a time for questioning me, but it is a time for questioning yourself. How you see God from your perspective, how you need to see God in a clearer way, perhaps, and how you are going to take action to find him in a greater way. Now you say, well, I want to ask questions about that. But you know what? You know what? I want you to take action with yourself. I want you to take action toward God 
in a personal way, in a way that only you know, in a way that only you understand, because that is what he wants. He wants your involvement with him as an individual. He created each and every one of you individually, and he put purpose into each one of you, a fire of originality into each one of you, a something different from everybody else. Your uniqueness is in God. And as you explore that uniqueness, as you are part of his love and understanding and are connecting with God, of course, he's going to feed the fire within you. He's going to feed that fire and help you to become the person that you need to be. The person that is truly you. Because when you are truly yourself in God, you cannot be happier. There's no way to be happier. Think about that. If you are truly yourself in God, how can you be happier? The joy of the Lord is your strength. You've heard that before. And it is true. He is your strength, your joy, your understanding, your beauty, your example. But yet, he made you truly unique. And you need to show the world that uniqueness, that example of who you are, and you will be happy to do so. I love you all. And I hope to one day speak to you directly. But God is here to speak to you in so many ways. Do not be deceived by those that will tell you that um, hatred will come from the sky, aliens will be demons and things of this nature because they are misinterpreting the beauty of the universe. Do not be deceived by evil or negativity, but Fight with positivity all that is around you. You do not know, you do not know, have to know the secrets of the enemy to, to be successful. You have to know the secrets of God to be successful. You don't have to keep up with all the things that the enemy is doing because God can overcome all those things. There are those that are into conspiracy theories and looking at all these different things, but what is that going to tell them? Nothing much, because the truth is being hidden. They're not going to allow you to see their plans. They're not going to allow you to know what their, their next move is. That would ruin everything. So be with God and understand the positivity so that you can defeat the negativity and don't waste your time looking into all that negative conspiracy th stuff. It, 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 they're not telling you the truth anyway. Remember that. If you put your faith in God and in positive thinking and in prayer and, and things that are good and, and compassionate and kind, you will be successful. Because you cannot know your enemy the way that you want to. That is all for today. Much love and blessings to you. I am happy to be with you today. And I am praying for all of you that you rise up in your perspective ways. Thank you very much, Elijah. Goodbye for now.
Greetings, I am Takur. Welcome. I heard my name being mentioned, and I thought I would have come and see what you need to know. Well, I think the number one question on the table is uh, what's happening with the government uh, meetings. Yes, the government meetings are going on right now. They, are, they have been slightly disrupted by the fact that some of the countries are not uh, willing to uh, work with each other. And so some of the Middle Eastern countries are there only when certain other countries are not, etc. There is uh, much more uh, defiance in, in this meeting than I have seen in other meetings. But uh, I am happy to say that they are finally here and they are finally um, talking to one another and us, of course. Many of you are helping in the astral while you are asleep. A few of you have already given some of your speeches. Today um, is the third day of the council. So it is, um, it is that there are many things going on. I see this council going on for at least six or seven or even eight days. It, there is so much to cover. But thank you all that are involved with this for being there and for uh, preparing in the astral some of the things that need to be said to them. Um, there is a great concern that the United States is going to have a space program, but it will be a military space program. So this is interesting and uh, very disconcerting to some of the aliens that are out here because they are wondering if the purpose of this space program is to actually be for humans on Earth or if, if it's to keep um, aliens away from Earth. I think it will have both effects. Are there any questions? There's a question here in the room. Okay, start with that. Kurt, this is just something that happened to me the other day that I wanted to talk to you about. I was walking my dog around 3 p.m. on Thursday or Wednesday, and he was going after the bushes like something was in there, and I'm thinking there's like a being in there that maybe I'm not aware of. It could be possible, yes. Like was it Sparrowcoast or? Well, Sparrowcoast is always around. Yes. So it could be, and you know that he uh, doesn't like Spiracos to get too close. Yes. So I thought maybe Spiracos might be getting a little closer these days when you're doing your walk, so it is possible that that okay, is. Okay. Yes, you're welcome. Any other questions? Yes, we have a number of them lining up. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering from the length of the talks, do you feel that there's progress being made? Is there a shift in, in the um, attitudes amongst the participants? Uh, the last couple um, meetings that we had, there was definite shifts toward uh, being more accepting to the alien population that's outside in the solar system. However, this uh, particular... Uh, said this particular meaning seems slightly more closed toward aliens because they're worried about world problems and they're asking for a lot of help from us and we are not allowed to help in political matters but we we can give some counsel but that is not what they're looking for they don't want counsel they want us to be helpful in um aligning ourselves with them and we can't really do that we can say yes we're aligned with all the countries because that's what we're allowed to do we're allowed to be positive toward all the countries but we cannot say we're we're allies with just this country or that country now since we cannot do that they seem a little less interested in what we are trying to get across but they are listening there are several countries that are not involved in 
power struggles or war, uh, thoughts of war, etc. So we are getting their attention and we are getting the attention of the larger countries because they do um, want to hear what we have to say because they're interested in their well-being, of course, and they find us, some of them find us comforting and some of them find us threatening. So we are still trying to calm uh, people down, calm countries down about how we are trying to work with them. And it is difficult when there's turmoil between the countries to uh, make them understand that we are not part of that. There, some, some of them believe that we are uh, do, helping other countries. Some of them believe we are doing things uh, secretly, but that is not the case. And we are letting them know that. So as far as the talks are concerned with the people from Earth that are there and talking to them, I thought they were very effective what they had to say. Um, many of you have contributed, and I think some of you know who you are. I, I can't name all of you so, because there's a, at least a 70 or 80, I think there was a 78. 78 humans were at the meeting so far, 78 different humans. Any questions? Yes, we've got four in the queue. Sheer is first up. Yes. Go ahead. I can't hear you. You your mic is not on or something is not right. Did does, did he write his question in the queue? It would be yes. That is not coming through. Um, I, I'm sorry, Sheer. You all that I got was crackly sounds and interference. Let's what about to, now? Oh, great. Oh, there he is. Hey, how are you? I am fine. Uh, first of all, you said that the United States recently announced that they are going to have a space military program, but I'm pretty sure they already have it for several of decades. So this is going to be much more amplified, uh, uh, much more amplified. It's going to be equal to their ground forces. I see, but it's not going to affect anyone because their technology is very, you know, not advanced. So no, but if they yeah. use the secret space program, which they are trying to access, they could have a much more effective security against us because there are those from uh, different species that have helped them to develop weaponry. And this, has been, this has been happening for many years. Okay, second of all, um, they want you to align with them, right? Correct. How about putting a paper on the table telling them whoever signed this document saying that you want us you know, we first contact and stuff like that, we are aligned with them. Those who are not going to sign this, they are not going to have galactic trading, we're going to have the galactic council watch over you, the blue avians, so sign it or be, you know, not with the rest of the world. Well, the galactic council would forbid that kind of action at this time because that would be, uh, one set of uh, alliances trying to gain favor with certain countries. And unless everybody was going to sign it, they wouldn't want that to be introduced. But uh, we, are, we are in talks with the Galactic Council about how we can uh, get a greater amount of acceptance and a greater amount of alliance with the entire world all at once. Because it's necessary for for peace in, on your planet. I, I I am very concerned that war could break out at this time. 
I see. And what about telling them about the great evils that are out there? And I know oh, they already know. Them. They have already. They're already aware of these things, and mm -hmm. they. And that is a part of their. They're saying, "Are we part of that great evil?" And we say, "No." But some of them have been deceived too many times to believe that we are good. And some of them have religious beliefs that are now becoming, they're, they're actually becoming very public about um, aliens and demons being the same. I've seen a couple of articles that are very interesting uh, that uh, quote revelations in the Bible. And it says that they're, uh, demons disguised as aliens coming to attack the earth and if that's the truth then we we are going to get a bad reputation okay um what about i know that there's a lot of illegal trading with negative forces how about speaking with the galactic council and somehow sealing off the plant completely and calling yeah. off their main line is it possible? They have done that already. So there are, from what I've been told, only 51% of the deal are being closed, but 49% are continuing. Are we saying that you dropped it to zero? It's about now 5% are still open because they are somehow cloaked and hidden. But all the major um, dealings and black market activities have been closed down. Okay, and one last thing, I know I'm taking a lot of the time. What about taking all the documents, all the recording, and going to the galactic, me uh, galactic uh, government meeting and telling them these are the countries that had deals with negative forces and pretty much put their dirty laundry yeah. on the table, putting some pressure about the on the other countries, saying, okay, those countries have you know, high advanced technology, yes. we need to align with the group with me. Well, first of all, the Galactic Council knows all these things. But you keep forgetting that we're not allowed to get involved in politics, and that would be a political move. Uh, we are not allowed to do that at this time. We are not allowed to do anything but help with the earthquakes, the volcanoes. And, and some of these earthquakes and volcanoes and things are already being taken care of by vortexes and things and and the and we're allowed to work with the axis but we the only thing we're allowed to do is give commentary and we're allowed to help them if they want us to speak to them and give them some advice but as far as uh drawing up that kind of an alliance or a document that is forbidden because it would it would it it is saying that you are entering a political arena and we're not allowed to do that i think that we are having the wrong meeting i think the next government meeting should be everyone with the galactic council being on the same line of how I to give you that. an advantage and well, it's something we have, like, hmm? remember we go through your your leaders we go through your leaders to speak to all of you and if your leaders do not allow us to speak to the people, then we cannot do it. We have to go by, you see, let me explain something to you. Your planet has created its own political arena. Your planet is um, governed by uh, many countries and their leaders. And for us to even be here is a privilege in some way. We are not allowed to enter that political arena in any way. Even these talks, we cannot come to the earth. We are only allowed to talk. We are only allowed to give opinions. We are only allowed to comment. To become active by document or any kind of signings or any of that nature would be against the uh, galactic law and would be punishable because we are only allowed to do what is um, right. If we were to be involved in the government situation, it would 
take away your free will in some way because we will be helping you to survive what you are creating for yourself. You are creating wars, you are creating politics, you are creating documents. We cannot be involved in that to save you, to help you. We have got to stay outside of your realm and give you only commentary and advice, but usually that can be helpful. But the thing is, if we were to become involved, that is unfair. Think about that. We would not want to be unfair because if you are to set off an atom bomb, we cannot help you with that. But if you have trouble with the axis or natural things that are not man-made or not man-discovered or are not, not political, we can help with those things a little bit. Taking some of the chemtrails out of the sky some were created by aliens. We can take those out. We can do things that are not directly caused by man. But we cannot affect mankind in the, uh, in the political or in the arena of actually doing something that is per forbidden. Okay. Uh, sorry for all the time that I'm taking, but two things that I want to put out and I will be done with that. I'm, I promise. First of all, one major loophole, you can't. But if the seven, uh, 78 people who are going to the government, a government meeting, if one of them is going to ask you for all the documents of the things that I said and going to present it, that will be allowed because that will be a human doing that. And this is perfectly legal, right? You may ask, they may give it to you, but how do you know that the governments will accept anything from regular people? Well, I have no idea, but what I want you to... Already, you already have... Uh, you have already asked for many things, and we have given you what we are allowed to give you. And you can give them to your governments and have offered them to them. They have accepted some things, but that does not mean that they will put them into action in any way. I see. And the second of all, can we somehow help the Gurk Fitnir have um, a, its own council with the Galactic Council? Like bring a lot of different races and speak with the Galactic Council. Maybe we can help you get some stuff. Some you have been there with us. We have brought a few of you along to the Galactic Council to speak on behalf of your planet as a as an Aboriginal person from the planet, if you will. So they do listen to the humans, but they understand you do not understand galactic politics, but it, they do listen and they are understanding. Okay, thank you very, very much. Believe me, th things will be done. I know, but I want to help them along. Thank you. And you are. Being available for to speak to the governments, to the Galactic Councils, you are always uh, volunteering to do that. So thank you. Christine is next in the queue. Greetings and blessings to Kerr. Greetings. Can you what hear me? Your... Yes, oh. I can hear you. I'm sorry. My question is, um, who in the U.S. is attending these meetings? Can you different tell me that? Different people at different times. You have your cabinet members that are uh, also attending, but... The uh, President Trump and Vice President Pence have been to at least 60% of the meetings so far. And wow. then they send uh, their cabinet members, CIA people, uh, the head of the CIA was there, and uh, people that they think that they need to, uh, to be there. Their representation has been better this time than the last time. 
the shock has worn off, perhaps. perhaps. <laughs> and um, with the UK, is uh, are they um, engaged also? Of course. Um, is the um, is Prince William one of them who uh, attends? Sometimes. He has not, he has not been there this time, but he does attend. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Mostly right now, parliament members and royalty will be attending from the English area. Their representation is usually only four or uh, three or four people at a time. Okay. Next we have Eva. Um, blessing, Tucker. I have uh, uh, two questions, and uh, yes, they are both burning questions. One is personal, and one is general about USA. Let's start with the personal. Um, as you know, because we've talked about it um, before, I am in this ongoing strange relationship, and at this time. I would like to break up, but it seems like very hard to break up. Also, it's not easy to be in. So if you can give me any advice. Um... Well, you have free will, my dear. And um, this, I can, I'm going to tell everyone this. Everyone has free will. And if you are unhappy, then you must leave. Why continue to make yourself unhappy? Even though it may be difficult, it is better that you feel better about yourself and about what is going to happen next than it is to maintain a relationship that you know is not going to work and that you know will eventually end. Why, why let it go longer? You know that it's not, not for you. Yeah. Um, do you have a any advice on when to end it, like now, no. now. Okay, okay, thank you. Well, my second question is about United States and I'm really deeply concerned. I know that Trump was going by after, after Cabal, the deep state, and I don't know, My actually I have several here questions. Is there anything positive about Trump and his work in United States right now as well. I want to ask what's going on with his children separated on the borders and Melania putting I don't care words on her coat. It's it's really all disturbing. I would prefer not to judge in this case, but things yeah. will change and things will get better in that situation because the world is telling him that they do not accept this. Um, they are all uh, telling him that he has been very harsh with other countries with their own uh, disrespect for their people. Now it is falling in his lap that he is disrespecting humanity. That is a problem. So it will be taken care of. What did Melania mean by, what doesn't she care about? I do not know. That is her own thought process. I am not familiar with the brain of Melania because I do not, I do not go to her. However, my thought process is this. I believe that she does not care because she has to follow, fall in line with the thoughts of the presidency and support that idea. And he has uh, said earlier in the week that he did not really care because they brought this on themselves. But that is now a changing opinion because he has changed his actions. However, the actions that have already been taken will have greater implications.
Does that answer your question? She's muted. So. Yes. Okay. I'm not anymore. Had some... Yes, I, I'm not here to judge anyone, really. Okay. But I just see what I see, and I know that oh, the the outcry from the world has changed his opinion uh, politically, perhaps mm -hmm. not personally, but it has changed his opinions politically. Yes. Is he still going by after Cabal? Is he still changing? Only, he is one person, a very powerful person, but the cabal is still more powerful than he is when it comes down to it. There are more people in the cabal than just him. He is part of the cabal in the sense that he is part of the wealthy portion of the world and knows what they are planning, but they are now keeping him out of the know or out of the loop in some of their dealings, for they do not uh think that more responsibility on his lap is a good idea they're keeping their thoughts to themselves and they're having meetings without him okay thank you so much Dakar. i really appreciate it. thank you you're welcome he's in a place of great power so they have decided that he they will let him alone for now all right the next uh couple questions are from the YouTube chat. Uh, Laura asks, are the plates in the Pacific going to vent much longer? That is a good question. Only Mother Earth and God know the answer to that. We have been looking at the, the tectonic plates, the volcanic reactions, and the reason it is so strong is that it's taking energy from a lot of different places. Um, it's taken the danger out of uh, some parts of California and Yellowstone Park. It's taken some of the danger out of Japan and uh, areas around that. So you have this middle section in Hawaii where there's uh, not as many people in that area. And so it's preferred that the volcanoes and the uh, earthquakes be strongest there at this time. Thank you. And the next question is from R. Newman. I do not understand why ETs will not honor the wishes of the majority of humans who would welcome their open presence here. Uh, she says that that has nothing to do with politics. But the majority of humans have no opinion, of to us anyway. There are a few of you. There, there may be a couple million humans that have opinions that they would have shared with us. But a couple million in the course of seven billion is not enough to create change. Not for us. We have to go by the governments until the people are all crying out for us in the billions. You have to understand that. A few million people cannot, we, we cannot just listen to a few million when a, there are seven billion that have not talked to us or cried out to us or even know that we exist. We have to wait for some more awareness. We cannot just go by two million. Uh, right, we have a question from Salem. Yes. Can you unmute? Hello, Salem. Hello. Yes. Greetings. Greetings. Uh, difference between the Cabal, the uh, Illuminati, Freemasons, and all these groups. Or that they said different groups. Uh, they there's many groups that are um, interconnected in some ways on your planet, such as the Cabal and the Mason Freemasons, the Illuminati. The uh, they're all they all communicate one with another. They don't all have the same agenda. When I talk about agenda, that. Uh, they all want to do things their own ways. They all have their own 
thoughts about what's the right way to do things and what what needs to be done. So um, they can't get on the same page, so they work independently for the most part. The cabal works for the cabal. The Illuminati works for the Illuminati. They're, the um, Freemasons are attached to the cabal in some ways and have a great deal of um, um, information and energy, but yet they cannot uh, convince the cabal to use their kind of energy, which is uh, ancient uh, Kabbalah kind of um, magic and things of that nature, but because the money is more powerful to the cabal than this kind of ancient magic. So you see, you have all these different ideas and all these different uh, references and frames of thought. So they're working independently and they're sort of doing similar things, but yet sometimes they um, hurt one another as far as what they're doing because they do it so differently. Does that make sense to you? Yes, it does. And can you give a small example on the different agendas from what I understand? Well, one wants to what, stop what, 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 who, can, who controls the finances? The cabal for, controls the finances. The Illuminati controls uh, is a group that is intellectuals, doctors, lawyers, scientists. Those the Illuminati is more of an intellectual group. They may have some money, of course, because but they are the cabal are those that are the leaders that have a monetary greatness. They have millions and billions of dollars. And that speaks very loud, much louder for them than anything that anybody else has. Because the world is ruled by money. Everybody must have money to survive. And that's what they want to keep. That's one of their objectives, is to keep money as the primary source so that they have control over mankind. They can manipulate mankind with money. Whereas the Illuminati wants to uh, manipulate the world with telling them the scientific values, the intellectual values, et cetera, et cetera. But they're both trying to eliminate the ascension process, which is the to moving into the next set of the next movement in evolution. But they're doing it all different ways. And actually, the Illuminati is losing a lot of power right now because they cannot uh, stay on the same page one with another. And then you have all these other smaller groups that may feed into the larger groups but still have their own ideas and are not directly uh, affecting the, the, the full movement. And they may have even different ideas, such as the Freemasons are there to bring illumination to the world through um, different means than the ascension because they are not they believe in god and all these things but they do not believe that the ascension is actually the next step of evolution things of that yeah. understood final two questions uh What's is Israel's connection to the whole thing? Because the way I predict it is uh, the conflict in the Middle East will start to unravel the whole situation in the whole world like a domino effect. It is true because it's gonna be it's gonna be very major. Of course, uh -huh. of course, that okay. Israel has a very uh, a great deal to do with it. It is one of the key uh, places in the world because. Um, some you will notice that those that are on the side of Israel are siding for their in the, that they are right about all the things that they believe about land ownership and things of this nature. Whereas those that are against Israel are against the ownership of the land and the capital, and because there's two major religions or more that are in. Um, one city and you know about what I speak about and yes. Yes. they are they fight over dominance is who's going to actually 
take that that space and it's one of the great it will be it, it will be fought over for all time <laughs> yes. and there, uh, from my understanding they're using religion as to control people but the real agenda is to control the world and keep dominating the world using finances and the military of course it's sketchy what they actually believe some yes some would believe that yes and others will say that that isn't true <clears throat> he needs one thank you marlene is next greetings to her <clears throat> thank you greetings um from my understanding um going back to the meeting um the because this closure is ongoing and uh, at a rapid at a more rapid pace right now uh, concerning the space program um from my pers from my perspective the uh, they have uh, been setting it up for at least two decades right now yes. talking about the military space program but now there will be a concentrated effort exactly and that uh, it it's a way now to officialize everything their presence their structure and amp up their direct intervention yes That's right. there have been rumors that they want to stage uh, an alien invasion a fake one so that people will not be so interested in having aliens come to the planet now, many believe that this is part of their plan to militarize the solar system, or at least their space, is to cause this to bring doubt about alien friendship to the entire world. This uh, could defeat us and keep us away from uh, first contact for a hundred years more if they succeed. Marson, they have been um, doing drills up there more recently. Of course. Uh, I, yes. Uh, yeah. All so I have to do is there's humanity there. They have since increased their uh, manpower on Mars uh, by about, well, there was only uh, maybe 12 or 15 up there for a while, but now there's hundreds. <laughs> and new bunkers have been uh, built, of course. Um, I'd like to talk about North Korea. I have a few questions, if I may. Sure. Uh, North Korea uh, was discussed during the meeting, especially when Trump and Pence were there. Yes. Uh, there was sort of an uproar, in a sense, um, uh, for those who uh, have different agendas or uh, different thoughts or defining this particular uh, intervention right. that Trump did with North Korea. Um, right. What is the outcome on the short basis, please? Well, you were not going to find that Korea is going to attack anyone. You're more apt to have China, who is an ally of Korea, attack someone. They have greater forces, but they may they may back up Korea to want them to start something, but it will be actually China that is doing the attack. Yes, because they're aligned. Korea, North Korea is aligned with China, of course. Of course. So if anything happens, it will be on China's on urging, because North Korea on its own has not the the intent of attacking at this point because they are they know that they would be completely destroyed they are they are too small but with china's help they could uh have a good uh attack plan but it would be all from china's perspective thank you for that and my next question is concerning the commercial dealings uh, with certain races with, with our planet. Uh, you mentioned that 5% are still uh, doing dealings, and um, it, it's my understanding that the Blue Avians 
are sort of policing our part of the galaxy and they're letting in uh, a few uh, races that may uh, continue doing the dealings. Are we talking about, um, in particular, these energy beings? The energy beings were not permitted into the uh, solar system. They broke into the solar system. So the blue aliens did not permit them. They actually crashed the party, so to speak. And were, uh, because they are such high frequency and yeah. they can mask themselves, they weren't seen until it was too late. But also creator beings have been sent to protect the planet in a greater way. So that is why all but 5% of the dealings have been cut down because creator beings can uh, stop all those things. It's actually down to 3%. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Um, is Germany present at the meeting right now? Yes. Or have they left? They're still there? Okay. Yes. Um, have they raised the question about uh, their relation with New Berlin? And uh, anybody from Antarctica there? Um, there are people from Antarctica, yes. The question about New Berlin does not concern us, so they did not mention it to us. Okay. That is their own political agenda. Thank you. That's all for now. Thank you. Very well. Is there someone else? Thank you for your questions, by the way. You're very welcome. Thank you. Sure is next again. Hello again, Tucker. Yes. Uh, first of all, David has a question about Agenda 21. It's a plan of uh, either the Illuminati or Cabal or both to reduce the population to 500 million worldwide by the year 2025 by viruses and disease. Can you say something about that? If they choose to do that and are successful, there is nothing we can do about it because that is something you are doing to yourself. We have nothing to do with that at all and we have to let it happen. We cannot step in. Um, it is just the same way with every other world that has come to this place in their, in their uh, existence. Some of them continue and become wonderful a fantastic species and others destroy themselves because of it. ignorance and greed and many other things. But we have to allow you to make your own decisions until you have decided that we are your allies by allowing us to come to your planet. Um, you mentioned the creator beings, uh, the 12, I think, where yeah. the creator beings are. First of all, that's an immense amount of creator beings because I know that they are. Oh, yes, they're absolutely immense. It's just that 12 are looking in on this area. And that's not that they're all bunched here together. Don't, th don't look at it that way. But there are 12 that have been told to watch over this area from some, you can understand that from a distance, billions of miles away, they can still see you. So that is, they are watching from great distances, but they can move very quickly if they need to. You see, well, it seems that a lot of effort is being put into the earth because if you have 12 outside, 48 within uh, and earth, which is 49, doesn't it mean, maybe someone can speed stuff along saying there's a lot of resources that are being put into effort because I know there are not that many sure. creator beings. Everything that we are allowed to do to help your timeline continue. Everything that we are permitted to do to help you along. Everything we are permitted to do. I see. Uh, the outside creator beings from the creator realm have a more juris uh, jurisdiction, how do you say it? Jurisdiction. Yes, more than the Galactic Council. Can they overwrite uh, some of their laws or overstep in some ways? 
The only person that can overstep your laws is God because he has the final word. But as far as anybody else, there, if they are to, to try to intercede or uh, make changes politically, they will be punished or they will be uh, kicked out of your solar system. Well, I think it's very hard to kick off, I don't know, Jesus or another no. cradle being who will come and here. And God, God. God and Jesus are permitted to interact with your world as much as they wish. But they are also uh, letting things happen because they, uh, I'm not sure why, but they are allowing it. And they told us that we were not, not allowed to uh, get involved with your politics. I will have a talk with Jesus. Excellent. <laughs> Thank I wish you all very... the best for that. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, I would see, yeah, maybe people should speak with their people. Right. Like uh, each person has uh, their own people from that galaxy or this galaxy. Maybe we can put some effort and I think more. prayer is the greatest power to help change your world that there is. Yes. Well, thank you very much, and we will try to help on our end. Thank, thank you. you. Yes? Is someone there? Hello, good day. It, it's Elena. Greetings. Greetings. It's long time no seen. Ushuha ere hamada lungorohoto esipara in tahatoto. Very good. Could you speak up, please? I would. Uh, I would like to ask. Um, um, are we seeing each other on the colonies still? Am I working there, doing the health um, exercises? What is what is the status of my work at the moment? You are working on the colonies mostly in colony one and six <clears throat> one is uh galactic languages and telepathy and six is healing and uh healing modalities um those two areas you seem to like to go to more than the others you have been uh quite often also to uh four which is uh channeling and every now and then to number two which is um health, uh, exercise, diet, all those things. But you are a teacher there. So you you do do some teaching with galactic languages. Or are you aware of that? Other than... You broke up there. That um, going in a positive. It's hard to hear you. Yes. Can anyone understand her? No. No. It's hard to understand you, and you're breaking up. We have a lot of other uh, questions in the queue. I suggest we move on and uh, see if she can resolve her microphone issues. Okay, very well. Uh, David Toretto, you're next in the line. Greetings. Hello. Good to speak to you again, Shakur. It's been a while. Greetings. I did, uh, I did have a thought to something I wanted to ask, but uh, I think it's um, better to present... Uh, in private, so I will um, move on and connect with you at another time. Very good. I'm glad that you are thinking about that. It is best to keep privacy with some of these issues. Yes, indeed. Much love to you. Much love to you as well. Is there another question that is more universal? Yes. Is there one here in the room? Yes. There's one mine, here in the room. Mine also aligns with someone who is in the key mark to let you know that. I've been wondering for many years 
about the RH blood disorder. Mm -hmm. Could you inform us on some of like information where it comes from? Because they say it's from outs outside of the human genome. And well, I just want to know. It is outside of the human genome is for sure. It's from your animal kingdom. But also that can have some alien G, uh, a DNA involved with it as well. So the RH factor is from actually animals in your realm. Uh, and how that is, uh, how that becomes part of someone's DNA is uh, your guess as good as mine. But it would, I would think it would be from sexual activity with animals. But um that has been something that happens over many thousands and thousands of years on your planet and in every other planet especially with primitive cultures all right thank you you're welcome right, i'd That's like to read question. off a few of the youtube questions that have been piling up and scrolling off the screen um uh, Electist888 asked about the percentage of Atlanteans who are volunteering for the uh, human experience in human vessels right now. There's quite a few. Um, but as far as percentage of their population, maybe only about 3% of their entire population, of course. Less than that, even. But that's they had a very large population. So there have been Atlanteans coming to volunteer on earth for the last 60 and 70 years Thank there is you. a question in the room also whenever right, you have let's a go to that do you want to do that now i just want to talk about these energy beings are they still in the area are they still uh, doing what they're doing um, the wasadraka has been stopped and they are not they are outside the area at this time they're probably regrouping and trying to find other ways to attack, but they have been stopped. Is that the same ones? Is it the Warsaw Drek is the same ones that experienced with myself? Yes. Go ahead. You may go to your YouTube channel. Thank you. Uh, Peter P is the uh, next uh, one from the YouTube. He asks, how is the voluntary human hybridization program going? How popular is it? And will there be more DNA from other species available for infusions? Absolutely. And I can tell you that it's very, the hybridization program, we have about 870 children from it already. Um, and yes, it goes outside of our eight alien DNAs to include um, Elohim, uh, El Yaha, and some of the other more spiritual and angels as well have been volunteering some DNA as well. So it does go, it is far reaching. And those that uh, get the, <coughs> those kinds of DNAs, they have not asked for children from those, but uh, they have asked for the DNA of those. But yes, there are many um, there are many hybridization programs even even outside of our programs, especially with uh, people in the Alpha Centauri area, the Sirius area, the Andromedan area, and the Octorian area. Pleiades is pretty much the Pleiades has uh, has uh, come to us to help them with their hybridization program. So we are part of the Pleiades hybridization program. Of course, there's other other areas as well, but I just named a few. Thank you, Takur. The um, next uh, question in the queue is from Paula Fuedo. An individual can be rich and not be deep state. Who is attempting to overturn um, America into a third world country? That has been trying to be done for a long time, actually. Uh, 
but any country that is greater than the United uh, or wants to be greater than the United States and sees potential that they can be greater than the United States will try to do that. This would be the countries that do not think that the United States has the right to go in and do just what they please in every other country in the world. And uh, that's how they view it. It may not be exactly that way, but it is the way it's viewed. And so there, there will be those that come together and try to stop them in, in any way they can. <coughs> and in doing so, they will, if they do stop them, they will overturn some thoughts of some of the political thought processes. Thank you, Takur. The next question is from Moonlight Rose, who asks, I'm interested in learning about the RH factor and why most are RH positive and 15% of the Earth population is RH negative. Is this a type of hybrid? Where does this come from? It, well, I just was saying, it does come from the animal species on your planet, but some of that is also alien. So it was, it's from some kind of intimate contact with the RH uh, factor. And that can be inoc an inoculation. It can also be sexually transmitted uh, through a, a birth or whatever. So therefore, there is a few different ways. But early in your civilization, there were many aliens and many of those that did inoculations, experimenting with these different kinds of things. So it it is actually less um well i think it's actually more uh noticeable the this day and age than it was before because it's sort of dominant in in some in some uh races i would have to look into that though thank you very much uh, Lilypad asks, how can we connect to the Galactic Shamanic Council or Silver Aliens? That is up to them. They have free will as well as you do. You may ask for their counsel and ask to connect with them, but it is up to them whether they will connect with you or not. They are a rather private group of people, and they like their, their privacy, and they do not like to be... Uh, they're very humble, and so... If you need their help, please call on them. But it, uh, and I believe that's one way you can really get in touch with them is if you need their help. Um, but uh, it is up to them to respond. Thank you so much. Uh, one last question from the chat. Uh, Sheer asks if the Galactic Council is sending someone to the government meeting. Of course. They're sending three people. Okay, Eva, well, three you're up. Civilizations outside of uh, Gurkvik Nir and outside of uh, of um, a lot of the other aliens that are being represented, they would like as many uh, representations of a different uh, species as possible. Um, I have another question. Very specific G five. Um, technology which, which is supposed to be quite dangerous to humans or life on this planet. Is that really dangerous or what's going on behind it, if you can tell what, us? What technology was that? G5. There are so many technologies that are dangerous to humans because A, they don't know how to handle them and uh, B, if they had them, they would use them for destructive forces. Now, these are act G5 is actually a very positive healing. It can be used for healing as well as it could be used for other things. So, uh, but it also is very energetic and can be also used for negative things. So these are the kinds of energies that you may uh, actually that enter your realm, but you do not have any way to yet identify them. Or, or harness them or use them in any way. So yes, they, it can be dangerous. 
only because you do not know what they do and how to use them properly for positive means. Thank you. Marlene is next. Marlene. Yes, um, I would like to address the rings of Saturn. Yeah. Uh, my understanding is that uh, water uh, was brought in from the different moons of Saturn into the rings, and uh, that the water vapors are a finite source of um, to be used with for technology. Um, is this technology, um, or can this technology be used by humans either, uh, I don't know, by direct or reverse engineering? And uh, if not, will it be in the future, please? Um, there is some technology out in the Saturn areas. There is not that much actual water in the rings. There, there, are, there is some water in, on the planets, some of the different planets. I won't, I'm not going to name them right now, but... Um, most of the rings are made out of ammonia crystals, uh, hydrogen crystals, uh, liquid hydrogen crystals, um, many of other different kinds of elements make up the rings and that's why they are uh, beautiful to look at is because there are many different colors uh, in their makeup. But uh, there is some water out there and it is being used by a civilization Two of the moons around Saturn do have a population of sorts. Only one has a, has a really uh, thriving population. The other one was is actually was sought out as a surrogate uh, place for survival by other species. So, uh, yes, there there is some technology there. The water can be used for survival and for technology, of course. Uh, but most of the crystals in Sa on the, around Saturn are not water. Are we talking about the gaseous beings that create the hydrogen? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, are the me meteor the meteorites are they uh, from the Earth cloud? The meteorites that you mean that come here? Y yes. From the Earth cloud. Are from the ast well, a couple of them are from the asteroid belt. Some of the meteorites are from the Earth belt, but uh, they're from all different areas. You have to understand that um, there's more than one place that they come from. But yes, uh, some do come from there. Are those gaseous beings um, working for Earth? Um, they have no, uh, they have no interaction. They are from a, a totally different realm of understanding than, uh, by, uh, than humanoid kinds of beings and their, their agendas are far different. And so they are really not, uh, uh attentive to what's happening on the earth. Which realms are you, or can you expand on that? Which realms are, realms are they from, those gaseous beings? Well, the gaseous beings are, are just that. They're gaseous, mm -hmm. and they're a very low density. So they have a survival issues with, um, they cannot be anywhere too warm. They cannot uh, be anywhere too cold. They, they have to be in just the right uh, setting for their particular existence and so most of their thought process is elemental and survivalistic but they're not a highly evolved species so you have to understand that they they are evolved to the point where they can um, communicate one with another they can do this thing but being a gas species they're still a very elemental, uh, uh, that's elemental creatures. Thank you for, for your information. Thank You're you. welcome. Christine is next. Takur, um, I remember um, a while back 
made maybe a few years back um, that um, you had discussed um, hybridization and also DNA yes. and how we would um, uh, go from the two strand to a higher strand and um, well, what it the fourth dimensional I'm exists. Sorry. Oh, go ahead. Yes, your fourth dimensional system uh, existence does have a third strand. Is that what you're talking about? Okay, so it wouldn't be um, still related to third uh, dimension. I was just wondering if you've already discussed it, if I could just go back into our past webinars and look under that information. Well, I, I'm not sure what you're looking for, but the third strand of DNA, which humans have in the fourth dimension, meaning that it is there, but it, you are not yet in Terra Ha, which is the fourth density, I should say, um, is um, not going to be available to you until you get to that place. Now, it is there in fourth dimension in, in the sense that um, you are heading toward that kind of an evolution into a fourth dimensional existence but it is not evident to you or in the third dimension or third density at this time. So um, this is not going to um, hold us up for um, if we request um, DNA downloads or... Um, no, no. You, the, the, you must understand you were born into the third density. You will stay right. in the third for but and all the uh, all the um, the inoculations or whatever that you get from other areas, they will still uh -huh. be in the third dimension and affect you in third dimensional ways. Even though they may bring up your fourth dimensional um, awareness and may increase your fourth dimensional uh, essence you will still be purely third dimensional until you are ready to move into the next density. Okay. Um, can you um, come at another time and discuss more in depth about um, how we um, how we can request special assistance, you know, like going to the different uh, um, laboratories or, you know, going to different... Well, yes, uh, the colonies, you can request assistance when you're there as well. We made the colonies to help humanity and to train humanity. Much of that information uh, goes into the subconscious, but when, you, when it comes to um, health and uh, exercise and things of that nature, that translate in, into your third dimension. Some of you will find that you may wake up in the morning and feel very exhausted and have a thought that you feel like you've been exercising well you have. So the colonies do take that portion of the ex exercise. If you do exercise on the colonies, it will translate into your body because the subconscious knows how to do that. Okay, so it would be... Um so nothing really has changed. So I could go back to the past webinars and get more information, sort yes. of to refresh my memory. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Thank you, Tikur. You are welcome. <coughs> uh, next in the queue is a YouTube question from Yudalaman Shulka, who asks, is the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi in contact with ETs. There was a recent sighting of a UFO near his residence. He is aware of ETs. He is um, aware that they exist. He has some contact because he is um, in the astral. He has contact with them, yes. But he does not have contact with them in the physical. But he does have astral contact with them. And he's a very he's a very spiritual person, and he has some very interesting questions for them, and um, we really like this person. Uh, 
Great. The next question in the queue is from Liney, who would like to know the current status of the implant ban. Implant what? Ban, uh, the pro oh, yes. prohibition on implants. <clears throat> well, it's still ongoing. And um, there are, I wanted to tell Liney particularly that her implant has been removed. So that is a good thing. I wasn't sure if she was made aware of that, but her the there the very bad implant that she had was removed. But yes, the implant ban is still ongoing because there has been some very negative infiltration lately and they want to make sure that everything remains pure. <coughs> <clears throat> and I almost missed another question from Liney. She asked, I want to know, has Emery Smith got some kind of protection whilst he brings disclosure about? Um, all those that are bringing disclosure have some kind of protection? Yes. All That's right. all I will say about that. Uh, but yes, <laughs> is the answer. Wonderful. Jay, it's your turn. Please unmute. Hello, hello. Greetings, so, Jay. yes, greetings. This is my first time to meet you so formally. It is nice to meet you. Thank you. My I'm very interested in the hybrid program. I just got on the call. This is my first call. I was told that that discussion happened just before I came on. So, rather than ask for take the chance of asking questions that would produce duplicate information. What can you add to what's already been said? I'm very enthusiastic about well, the whole concept. Part of the program, the hybridization program, we have several different portions to it. You have, you can donate DNA for serums to help other populations become healthier. You can help, you can uh, give DNA to have children, uh, hybrid children with different species and there's several different species available at this time. We have eight species available through Gurkfiknir, but then we also have outreach programs to other, uh, other uh, species that are, have their own, uh, their own uh, hybrid programs that we can work with, but they are yes. not directly affiliated with us. I've seen that on the website. What can you say to our collective humanity, since I'm one of us, uh, being able to accept this? I've been aware of this for great 20 years, maybe. Uh, and it's been a gradual process to where I can truly say, now, nah, this is an exciting idea. Yes. But if I mention it to a lot of my friends, they just roll their eyes back and they can't even conceive well, of it. I understand. You, the hybrid program has been done very well. We have about 870 children at this time. The hybrid program has been around for several years now and hundreds. There are some, some of you that have six and seven children because you keep saying, I want another, I want another. And um, they do have their own family union outside of the earth, but that includes your DNA with this with the mother. So you have the mother, the father, and your DNA, and then the child comes with a conglomeration of all these DNAs. So it is a wonderful program. The children seem to be more intelligent, healthier, uh, more able to uh, expand themselves than, than we had ever imagined. So also, they are the hope for the future, really, to bring about greater peace and understanding in the universe. I agree. <clears throat> so how can we, how can I physically meet one? You cannot physically meet one yet because that's not allowed, but you can astrally meet as many as you wish. But uh, many people cannot remember their astral travels. We're working on that still. That has been... I think um, because of the way humans were made by God, it makes it more difficult for them to see other dimensions. But there are those of you that are that are in the the um, 
human realm that it can actually see fourth dimension at times. <laughs> but that is a that is a wonderful thing for those who can see it. Well, I've been able to. Yes, I've been told that we were bred for to be workers, and as such, our we don't have very much barriers to our subconscious, so that we could be controlled. How do you respond to that statement? I do not think that you were bred to be workers. You were bred to be the saviors of the galaxy because your hybridization, the way that you were seeded, has given uh, your DNA the strongest hope for saving many of the species that are out here that are have become weakened over time because they have not taken proper care of themselves in some ways. So I do not see you as a worker species. I see you as a, a very highly developed a hybrid species. And um, they may want to tell you that you're a worker species to bring you to a different thought process about yourself, but you're actually elevated higher than you might think. Hmm. So when you say you, you mean all of us in this modern yes, time? You as a group, yes. Ah, wow, that's awesome. Yes, so if you, if you understood the galactic prophecies, you will see that human DNA is helpful to all humanoids in the galaxy because of the way you were seeded and the kind of hybridization you have. It makes you your that other species stronger when their DNA is mixed with yours. And that's what the hybrid program is all about. And to volunteer, we can go to the website and, and send a message and you'll Absolutely. get it. Yes, we, there's hundreds of letters on the website. So we see them. Very good. <laughs> Anything in, in closing? I just, I, I just have this itch like that. There's something that you can share with us, humanity that will Oh, what's the word here? Open a few doors in our deepest psyche consciousness that will enable us to more gently uh, em embrace the hybrid program consciously. That is, that is something that we are doing all the time. Yes. And we are, the thing is, it has to grow naturally. It cannot be pushed or pulled, sure. but it must grow in a natural way. And that is how we are nurturing it through human colony and through other places around the earth that also recognize hybrid programs but it is growing and it is people are starting to understand it but you really can't force that kind of information on people they have to understand it and uh grok it if you will and no, um, and let it let it become part of who they are and then they move forward with action very good so i guess i could and imagine it and dream in a daydreaming about it that would lend help to any kind of positive energy toward it is ah. helpful yes okay thank you nice to meet you jay Oh, more, more, more later. Yes. Who else has a question? There's one in the YouTube chat, which I'll read. Um, Peter P. asks, there are human childless couples that can't conceive. Can they ask Girk Fichtnir to help them get pregnant and have a hybrid child or children at the same time with a race of their choice? There are certain energies that can help with fertilization. X3 healing energy uh, attached to uh, technology can actually do that. Reiki healing has been able to heal uh, fertility issues with the grays. It's been proven. Um, so yes, there may be some uh, help available for them. If they believe, if their belief system can attach them itself to these kinds of things. 
All right. I think that catches up on the question queue. So I'd like to ask a question. Earlier, you were speaking that you're aware of millions of people in favor of open contact. Uh, I see kind of a chicken and the egg situation. If the governments are keeping alien presences secret, how do we effectively let more people know that your support is available? The internet is wide open for most places, not all countries. China is closed. Uh, some parts of Russia are closed and things of that nature. But the people who are interested in these kinds of things find them. And they, if they know that they are, they, these kinds of things exist, they look for them. A word of mouth is also the greatest way to spread information because people are unaware that maybe some things exist on the internet and they go, oh, so, and you are starting a site about um, uh, UFOs, a UFO uh sighting kind of uh, place, which I would tell everyone to go to because it also, whenever you become part of something like that, you're also connecting to a first contact mentality in many ways, even though you're just looking for ships and the proof that they exist, that is also saying that you may be also interested in meeting some of those that are in the ship. So, uh, go and become part of that so that you can uh, become part of a, a network that can actually grow and expand into something that could actually persuade the, your, your political groups to want first contact or to listen to the people. Thank you, Takur. I believe Shear has one last question. Yes. And what I see that, well, I will, say, I will ask it this way. We are three days in. Can you tell us what subject were talked and what is scheduled for the next few days? Which talk and on which day, if you are allowed? <clears throat> well, you've already, many of you have already discussed uh, site to site. Um, and uh, this is something that is an ongoing, uh, an ongoing discussion, especially with those that are needing, uh, medical care. You are, you mostly discussed sending all the, the people that would wish medical care to the ships to get it. That is still closed at this point because they would only be willing to send their immediate families or people in politics to the ships <clears throat> for medical care. Um, they are not open to sending everyone on the population that wants medical care to the ships. So that remains closed. Also information on greater medical treatments because of the um, pharmaceutical uh, business, which is billions of dollars, they do not want the cures. They want the cures for themselves, but not for the population. So I see a great deal of uh, selfish actions on the parts of the political arena. Also, we have also discussed um, maybe having representatives from the Earth visit us so that they may understand us better to uh, see uh, in the astral, we're not allowed to bring him in the physical, but see that we are friendly, that we have positive programs, that we are helping Earth. In, in some ways, we can show them the technology that we use for uh, helping with volcanoes, tectonic plates, uh, axis uh, uh, weather, and all the different other things. We can show them these things in the astral. They may retain some of it, they may not. But I think that 
the very fact that they would be willing to come would be a very big thing for us. And so far, they they did accept that uh, two years ago. But when they came, they were they brought uh, when it was allowed to have them at the very beginning. We were allowed to bring people site to site. They brought their weapons, and so after that, Galactic Council shut down site to site and all these things. So, um, <clears throat> um, it is just what it is. So we have to work with them as they see things evolve. Uh, we are also talking to them about uh, the hybridization programs. And there'll be more talk about that in the coming days, I think. But there are so many subjects to cover. I think it will probably go eight days this time. I see. And are you telling me that the Galactic Council sits in listen to the to the earth governments and they don't think that some adult should come in and like like this is ridiculous well i know the earth is a, a very large kindergarten at some stage but we still have got to let your leaders be your leaders we cannot change the who they are we cannot come in and take over and make it a better place because that is not what God wants us to do. Your free will is your free will, and that goes for your politicians as well. Okay. Um, thank you very much. I have a question. There is a question in the room. It's her. Greetings. Um, talking about since our galactic families cannot give us him. So I have a question regarding the Octarian medical ship that I saw a few months ago, why it was in our atmosphere. Yes. They come in um, fourth dimension and they can do some healing from that from the uh, fourth dimension. Yes, if people want them to come, they come in fourth dimension. They do not come in the third dimension. But those that can see them in fourth dimension can get healing from them. And they do come to the surface because they are not in third dimension. They're allowed to be there in fourth dimension because that doesn't interfere with anything except for those that, that can see into the fourth dimension. So they do some healing that way, yes. There's a place in Iowa that has a great medical center from the Octorians. But it's in the fourth dimension. You can't see it if you're a third dimensional being. But they do send energies around the planet for healing. And that's allowed. Okay. <clears throat> okay, thank you. It's not interfering with political groups. It's only, inter it's only sending healing energy, which you can do from any place in the universe. Okay. So that is allowed. They feel that they're getting <clears throat> some healing on me. Yes, they probably are. I think our time is about up. Yes, we've got a couple questions left in the queue. Would you like to take one more and then uh, maybe share a blessing? Well, let's see what they are, yes. Marlene? <clears throat> yes, to cure one last question. Um, I understand the, there's a Pleiadian mothership that has moved in very close. Can you expand on this for us, please? <clears throat> there are several ships that are close to the Earth at this time, and it is because they want to make contact with the governments. Many ships are also looking for ambassadors to their area of space from the Earth. Many feel that <clears throat> this time in Earth history is <clears throat> conducive to first contact. So they're trying to get their ambassadors and representatives ready for when that day comes. So, yes, there are many different ships looking for their ambassadors or, or looking for <clears throat> uh, first contact evidence. 
Thank you, Takur. Thank you for all the information and the output and the positive outlook that you've given us today. You're welcome. Thank you. I'd like to um, ask if you'd like to share a final blessing before we wrap up. Of course. Mwaha, ia yanza sashab yet. Aliyato dia, mono uri kariata. Ia natu wasati asanzi. Nahati karwa noturi moshi. Shenzet. Kendo ora ali. Mukwetita. Wakata. Yea sonza zumba. May God bless you and keep your eyes focused on him for it is the only way that your civilization will survive is if you become less selfish and committed to a more communal living situation i pray for you every day that you understand that being friends one with another is more important than you can possibly imagine much love to you and many blessings <clears throat> Namaste. Namaste. Thank Any other blessings? Actually, I will go and you can do your blessings without me. I will I will bring Jim back. Thank you, Tucker. Hello. Hi there. Hi. How are you? Welcome back, Jim. We're good. We're good. Lots of interesting questions today. Wow. Cool. Good. I'm glad. All right. Anybody for a final blessing? I'll do one. Okay. Barbara will do one. Anybody else? Anybody else out there? All right, Barbara. That's me. Okay. Tatia tati kusutu nea tia tako shuata yata nati tata to kututu to atia natiato yata tatu kusu yata tatita to tua tako shua yata tasika katnu kutea tate to wata takasiat no kuata tia to wata kasia to wata hiana. There is, of course, a light from heaven that shines on you. But look for the light one with another and find that God within yourselves so that you may be the examples that you should be and must be for this planet. We are watching. We love you very much. We extend our hands to you in friendship, in compassion, and in great understanding. So let us know that you are working for peace among the galaxies. Be well, and I hope and pray that someday soon we will meet. Yes, okay, very good. Anybody else? <clears throat> yes. You have one? Oh, Angie has a one. Go ahead. Atua niya tatua sa yasa si nadi katukua a shaji ane niya tatu ane niya taka a si ay ota sa niya taka a niya tike kay o niya ay lai kata niya sa swa yesha ane niya ta o ane niya ta sa yasa si niya tatu. Information is important, but there are other things that are even more important than our communications with. God and each other, and that is understanding and love. Give peace to one another. Give love to one another. This is a communication that goes far beyond words. Let it be known that these can be felt by the heart, the mind, the soul, and the spirit. All things considered, love is the greatest of your communication.
Okie dokie. Is everybody good? Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Let's. Th I want to thank everybody who participated today. We had a lot of good questions, a lot of good information. And, good. Uh, and especially thank you, Jim. I know it's a long session for you and uh, appreciate uh, you're doing this for us. Well, and remember everybody, the workshop is coming on the 16th of August through the 21st. It's only $400, which is really good. And that's all your meals as well and a place to stay. So it's a really good deal. And it's in uh, Dansville, Pennsylvania. I mean, Dansville, you New York, not Pennsylvania. Uh, well, if there's a Dansville, Pennsylvania, I don't want anybody to end up there. So, uh, also, um, it's going to be really fun. Also, remember the book. If any of you haven't read it yet, uh, go ahead and do so. And what other messages are there? Oh, I'm. If there's any interest in in another Galactic Reiki class, let me know. Cause I have heard that there was some interest, but I need to know for sure if if there will be some participants. It's a hundred dollars for six hours. It's a Saturday and Sunday usually. All right. Have a great day, and that's all I have. All right. Thank you, Jim. We'll now go off air.